Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zias Caravalla from ZK Research, and I'm here at VMware Explore 2024 in Las Vegas. Uh, I'm here with the uh, VeloCloud SASE team. I'm here with Ram, uh, Sam Rostogi from uh, VMware. Can you a uh, little bio on yourself, what you do? Yeah, my name's Sam Rostogi. I lead the VeloCloud product marketing team. Yeah, and, Sam, and uh, Kish uh, Ramaswamy, and, uh, and a little intro on yourself. Right, thank you. Uh, my name is Kishan Ramaswamy from the product management team. I run product management for our VeloCloud products. Yeah, so we're going to talk a little bit of SASE, a little bit of SD-WAN, right? A uh, little bit of edge computing as well. Um, now, uh, let's. Uh, the overall theme of the show uh, this year, there wasn't a lot of news. The big news item, though, was VCF9, the private cloud stack. It's pretty clear that under Broadcom ownership, private cloud, and, and I actually think there's a huge momentum around private cloud right now. Um, and so that was a big focus of the keynote. Now, one of the things they, they didn't, they alluded to but didn't touch on was the linkage between SD-WAN and SASE and private cloud. So can you talk a little bit about that, Kish? Yeah, absolutely. So if you think about what the announcement was, it's all about moving applications from different cloud providers back into your core data centers. But we're also seeing a trend where it, the application doesn't just sit in the data center, it's also moving all the way to edges. So think about manufacturing, think about retail, there are critical applications, time sensitive applications that needs to run right at the edge. Right? On top of this, you've got uh, within, with the influx of AI applications, you want to ensure that there is an app, a stack that's right size for a large variety of distributed apps, and at the same time, they're also capable of running AI workloads. So we in SDE, Software Defined Edge, have come up with a three-layered architecture just to address this. Uh, think about this as a three, you know, a cookie, right? You've okay. got the crust of the cookie, that's right on top, that's our edge compute stack. It's right size, it's built in a way for operators to basically run application at all their remote sites. It is built to run AI workloads so that any sort of inferencing, any SLMs that have to run can be done at that edge itself. You also need a good network infrastructure. So think about that as the other crust of that cookie. More and more operators are modernizing their networks, whether it's their RAN network, whether it's their fixed uh, wired networks, or now the, you know, your 5G networks. They need the capabilities to modernize it, to be able to cater to running all these applications. That is where the, the network layer becomes very important. The important glue that sticks the network layer to the application is that intelligent overlay layer, what we like to call the cream. Right. Yeah. And that's where VeloCloud comes in. <laughs> so VeloCloud is that intelligent overlay that ensures that the networks run, have the right capability, to run those applications end to end. And that's a three-layer cookie. Yeah, and, and I do think it's something, uh, you know, for the audience to just keep in mind, while there is, I think, like I said, tremendous momentum with private cloud, most organizations I talk to don't, aren't really thinking about it in isolation, right? We are moving into a hybrid multi-cloud world where it's a combination of public cloud, private cloud, and edge. And in that case, the network plays a, you know, a really critical role in making sure that happens, right? Oh, 100%. Yeah. And add on to this three-layered cookie, yeah. edge intelligence or edge AI. So in every layer of this stack, there's artificial intelligence that built in just so that you are able to achieve that goal you just mentioned, being able to run a smooth, distributed architecture. Yeah, now I want to transition to the news from, uh, from your group as well. Uh, there was some um, VeloCloud news, uh, both in the area of security and networking, and so why don't you start with the networking and, and, um, and, and what, what was new there? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, as you might have seen, there's been a recent you know, trend, a, a significant upward trend in the adoption of fixed wireless access technology, particularly for enterprises and businesses. A lot of enterprises are still remote. Uh, think about the verticals they're in. It could be financial, it could be retail. Uh, they need connectivity. They need secure, reliable connectivity. This is where fixed wireless access comes in and helps address them. Um, you also have to, uh, you know, in, in, in that space of fixed wireless, you also have satellite that's become a lot more popular than it was before. Uh, you know, it's not just a backup connectivity, it's a primary connectivity, fairly low latency. So given that connectivity uh, is, is evolved from just wired line to wireless access, we have basically launched a few technologies that can adapt to those wireless uh, capabilities. Uh, one is 
starting from the hardware, we've announced uh, three different flavors of hardware recently. Uh, the 710 5G platform that comes with an integrated 5G modem, and then we have got the 720 and 740. All of them are AI ready and have the capability to run what we call AI DMPO. So being able to co- And, and remind us what DMPO is. Uh, thank you. Yeah. So dynamic multipath optimization has been the core value proposition of Fellow Cloud from its inception. The ability for us to detect applications, uh, treat the appropriate you know, policies, and be able to go in and deliver um, you know, access to SaaS applications. So all of that remediation is handled by dynamic multipath optimization. And then how does the insertion of AI help that? In today's world, the applications have far more evolved than what they were a few years ago. You have an influx of AI applications. You would never have thought of uh, you know, accessing cheap chat, I'm sorry, chat GPT a few years ago, and now a lot of us use it. And, and similarly, there are multiple different applications that, are, that have just come into the edge. So how can end with the advent of technology such as uh, TLS 1.3 and ECH, uh, encrypted client hello, we can, it becomes more and more difficult to understand what that application is. If I don't understand the application, I can't treat it with the right priority. So AI DMPO goes and understands the characteristics of the applications no. based on how the applications typically behave, what type of flows they set up, to what endpoints they do, and using that we inference what the application is. Then we are able to go in and have dynamic business policies that can adjust, particularly in the world of fixed wireless. How can I measure the appropriate bandwidth? How can I increase and contract bandwidth based on the available link, the link characteristics, as well as the application itself? So bringing all of that context is what AI DMP does. Yeah, and using DMPO on wireless makes it almost, people have shied away from wireless because of unpredictable nature, but uh, I've talked to some of your customers, so it's indistinguishable from terrestrial connectivity now. Absolutely, yeah. and you know, layer on what VeloCloud does, and we've just done our, uh, you know, yeah. a, a bit of, uh, research into the connectivity that we've seen. With DMPO, we've seen almost a 650% increase for real-time traffic such as video on those things. Yeah. Now, Sam, I want to pivot to you. Um, I've noticed with the some new branding around uh, VeloCloud, it's secured by Symantec. Uh, however, that's not just a partnership, right? There's a level of integration here that you guys are doing. So can you talk about what, what the Secure by Semantic means and the benefits to the customer? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, our VeloCloud uh, SASE Secure by Semantic is uh, our single vendor SASE offering. Uh, it brings uh, really the ability for our customers to take advantage of all of the best-in-class SD-WAN capabilities from VeloCloud together with the uh, proven SSE capabilities from Symantec. Uh, so what we've done is we've really built upon the innovation or integration that we've announced in the past. Um, back in November, we announced management integration where we automated the IPsec VPN tunnels from the VeloCloud edges to the uh, Symantec Enterprise Security Pops. What we've done now is we we are uh, we announced new data plane integration. We've actually upgraded our VeloCloud uh, cloud gateways that are now in uh, GCP, and we're leveraging that global infrastructure to enable our customers really uh, provide uh, uncompromised performance and security. So they're able to take all the rich um, intelligent traffic steering from VeloCloud. We're able to build very high throughput Geneve tunnels directly to uh, the semantic uh, um, enterprise security points of presence. And so we can scale up dynamically that rich set of security services from semantic. All of this automation is, is already done for our customers and they really get the immediate benefits of uh, really that optimized performance, but with the really rich enterprise class security capabilities from Symantec. Yeah, now, uh, not all customers are, are ready to bring security and network groups together, uh, although I think that'll happen over time. Uh, and historically, you've serviced the security side through partnerships. And uh, uh, are those going away? Are they staying in place? Can you provide an update with that? Yeah, you know, so VeloCloud has always been open and flexible. We continue to invest in our open third-party partnerships. And quite frankly, really enabling our customers to take advantage of both best of breed SD-WAN with, with security, giving them the flexibility to decide if they would like 
uh, to deploy uh, you know, dual vendor SASE, we certainly are continuing to build those integrations. And we're also seeing that our customers today are also looking to take advantage of a unified platform such as single vendor SASE, and we're continuing to, to build out and innovate on that side as well. But that gives them really the best of both worlds. If they have, they're using the SASE vendor today, you can bring Velo in, run a dual vendor solution, and when they're ready to bring it together as a single vendor, when you can accommodate that as well. That's right, and yeah. we, we continue to expand on creating those deeper integrations with our third-party SSC partners, but also innovating within our single vendor SASE offering, enabling our customers to really operationalize, better deploy SASE for their environment. All right, well, uh, thanks for the update. Was there anything else you wanted to add? No, I think that was it. Yeah. 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 All right, well, I uh, hope you guys have a great rest of the show. Uh, so on behalf of uh, uh, Sam and Kish, I'm Zias Caravalo from ZK Research saying thanks for watching. Really appreciate the update from both of you. And um, uh, please hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time on the next episode of Zcast. Thanks, guys.